major project earmarked for Grand Bahama could get approval soon. That story coming up. Coming up in the Bahamas tonight, it's been described as the biggest tourism deal in the region. I'll tell you all about it straight ahead. Southwest Airlines making its inaugural international flight to the Bahamas today. The details coming up in the Bahamas tonight. The Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition, starts now. Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition. Good evening all, I'm Megan Shepard. Thank you so much for joining us. Better days are said to be ahead for Grand Bahama as the government works to return the nation's second city to its glory days. Sabrina Brown tells us about a proposed investment that could get the green light soon. Emphasis is being placed on turning Grand Bahama's economy around. Among the new developments on the drawing board for the island is a major agricultural enterprise. Prime Minister Christie says the government is in the process of approving the application for this mega project. There's an investor who in, has invested in the tourism industry in Grand Bahama who has come to the government with respect to a major investment in agriculture and agricultural production unprocessing. But the nation's leader says he wants to ensure that many Bahamians can benefit from this new venture. The only concern I have for the application for Grand Bahama, for the agricultural enterprise here, is that the amount of land they wanted could be enough to feed the whole Bahamas. And I can't allow that because we want to be able to use them to incentivize Bahamians to join them down here in farming. Grand Bahama, he says, is also a potential site for a mega fish farming development. The company came in and said, they're looking for a place and they've come down to Mexico or the Bahamas. And they want to be able to farm fish. And they're talking about millions of tons annually. Ocean farming. And the only question is whether what they want to farm will be compatible environmentally with our waters. And if they do, and then we say, well, Grand Bahama is a potential site for that. And the question was whether the waters around Grand Bahama are too cold. But those are, that's the process that's going on now. Because the container port lends itself to it, and they also fly these things out. And they're talking about tankers carrying out the, the, the little seedlings, and tankers taking the fish and bringing them in to a processing plant. A huge enterprise involving a lot, a lot, a lot of employment. The Prime Minister is also optimistic about the recently established agriculture and marine sciences in Andros. The government is partnering with the University of Miami and the University of Florida to make it a success. The University of Miami has gone further. On the 14th of July, they have made provision for me to make a speech in New York to people who are interested in fly fishing. And I don't know if you know, Grand Bahama has its tremendous opportunity to be a fly fishing center. Andros is one. All over the Bahamas, when you look up at the map of the Bahamas and you see the shallow waters, you know that the tarpon, the bonefish, the, the cobia, the snook, all of these are in our waters. They have now said, if I go up there, I should ask for $10 million over five years. And these people will donate it. Sabrina Brown, ZNS Network News. The government is finalizing the plan for the extension of tax exemptions to East and West Grand Bahama. Minister for Grand Bahama, the Honorable Dr. Michael Darvel says, the new tax incentives demonstrate the government's commitment to respond adequately to the needs of residents in a systematic way. Minister Darvel explained the depth to duty-free exemptions while addressing the pre-independence church service this week. I am happy to report that through the amendment of the uh, Tariff Act, Section 98, the residents and local business persons who wish to invest in West Grand Bahama will be granted duty-free concessions on building materials and capital goods for the startup and improvement of businesses and the initiation of entrepreneurial development in West Grand Bahama. Mr. Darvel noting how the exemptions will benefit businesses and residents in East and West Grand Bahama and says more details will be released in the weeks ahead. These initiatives will not only stimulate the construction industry and create more 
jobs in West Grand Bahama, but will further the economic growth in your community as it will lessen the financial burden of potential investors who wish to establish businesses in West Grand Bahama. Residents, as of July the 1st, 2014, a licensed department in the Ministry of Finance will be established in the Ministry for Grand Bahama to accommodate these new incentives for potential entrepreneurs. New gateways set to open for Grand Bahama as the Ministry of Tourism has increased its advertising campaign and intensified its efforts to boost visitor arrivals to this island. Joan Davis Froh reports. Grand Bahama is on the ups, uptick. Things are happening. They're happening um, quickly. So quickly that there's an all-out effort to catapult Grand Bahama's tourism industry as the island of Grand Bahama is said to be surpassing New Providence when it comes to a vital part of the tourism sector. For overnight um, stay over visitors and indeed year on year, so looking at the figures for 2014 versus 2013, we see a staggering growth of approximately 33%. In fact, they've way surpassed New Providence. So that is exciting and that bodes well. Very recently, Thomas Cook, um, North Europe, that's the Scandinavian, Scandinavian office branch, they did a fam trip of New Providence and Grand Bahama. Their first stop was New Providence, and we thought we had them hooked in New Providence. They had absolutely in love with the Bahamas and the product, but they said that they would defer any decision until they visited Grand Bahama. Well, I was delighted to report that I've heard from them, and they want to bring in a charter, full charter beginning winter of 2015, to Grand Bahama. That's how much they fell in love with this island and the offering that is available. Director General of Tourism Joyanne Jubilu says that's not all. We have a new um, carrier coming on later in the year, Frontier, and so that's excellent news. Again, bringing um, a greater airlift into Grand Bahama. And the more airlift we can bring in, the more promising it is. And it, it is no point us having the product here, having the rooms, if we cannot get people to the island. So by opening up more and more gateways, that just speaks to this um, evolution of growth on the island. The top tourism executive was recently on Grand Bahama as the executive board of directors of the Bahamas Hotel and Tourism Association convened on this northern island. She told ZNS News that the Ministry of Tourism also has a strategic plan of action when it comes to expanding its global reach. The specific aim of traveling to Europe is to speak with um, air carriers as well as tour operators and we're talking, you know, we talk about 16 islands of the Bahamas. So we're looking for airlift for all these islands. So not just New Providence, we cannot leave Grand Bahama and our other islands out of the mix. So I'm just excited. I'm excited that the Bahamas will be represented at the table and that we can talk. We know our product better than anyone else. And so so yes, definitely one of the priority areas is to increase their lift. Joan Davis Roll, CNS Network News. American pilots do celebrate the U.S. independence Bahamian style with a special fly into the islands of Abaco. Veteran American pilot Captain Mark Steinberg, chairman of the Bahamas Ambassador Flying Program, will lead a group of 54 persons on 24 private airplanes from Fort Myers, Florida to Treasure Key, Abaco. The group began arriving today and will leave on Sunday. This year's flying event has attracted 15 new first-time pilots to the Bahamas. The Bahamas Fly-In Ambassador Program is a joint initiative with the Bahamas Ministry of Tourism and the Bahamas Aviation Department. Two suspects appearing in court three today on armed robbery charges. Chris Davis, 35, and 46-year-old Maureen Marlow Colbrook were arraigned before Deputy Chief Magistrate Helen Jones. They were not required to enter a plea, and a preliminary inquiry is now set for August 5th. Davis and Colbrook are accused of robbing a man on Fortune Beach on Friday night. Police say the pair held the man at bay with the pocket knife and robbed him of cash and fled the scene. Davis and Colbrook were remanded to Her Majesty's Prison in New Providence. Two men from the bite in West End taken before the court aren't charged with harvesting juvenile conch. 
The men, Stephen Allen and Nicholas Rowe, were arrested last Wednesday afternoon after a defense force vessel found the men in possession of 169 undersized conch on board their fishing boat near Sandy Key. Allen and Rowe were given a fine of $500 or six months behind bars. Stay with us, there's more news after this. Bringing news that matters to you. You're watching The Bahamas Tonight, Northern Edition. The Bahamas will celebrate its 41st anniversary of independence in a couple of days, and a number of activities have been scheduled to commemorate this special occasion. Here on Grand Bahama, a series of events are taking place to celebrate the country's birthday, the latest and ecumenical service of Thanksgiving in West End. An ecumenical church service being held at St. Mary Magdalene Church in West Grand Bahama. Minister for Grand Bahama, the Honorable Dr. Michael Darfel says it is only right that residents come together to give God thanks for his guidance and providence throughout the years. Minister Darvel says this year's theme charges us as Bahamians to embrace our culture and each other. The year 2014 has been declared the year of culture. Our nation's leader, the Right Honorable Perry Gladstone Kirch Christie, in keeping with the proclamation of this year's independence theme, creating and celebrating our culture, a commitment to peace, compels us as Bahamians to appreciate the qualities, behaviors, and beliefs that set our society and people apart from others. And in recognition of these unique characteristics, to live in harmony with our fellow countrymen. Reverend Father Ian Claridge noting the significance of the month of July, saying that it brings a new beginning for the country as a new financial budget is set, a new regime of taxation, new incentives to West and East Grand Bahama, and a host of other changes. As we look in our nation and celebrate the 41st year, as we look in our nation and see the changes that time brings on, we see the changes that were enacted by law, we see the changes that happen because of nature, but we must recognize that all change must begin with God. He is the only one that really makes you realize and want to start over. Reverend Claridge says changes are necessary. As a society grows, it must adapt to the world around it. He says while change does not happen overnight, one must be prepared and willing to embrace it. How many of you understand that this change is a process. Yes, we must change to be prepared and to be equipped to face the world around us. We must recognize this change. And if we don't embrace it, at least be aware of it and be prepared to work along with it. In the scripture, we recognize that there is not only the need for a new beginning, but we must also understand that it is progressive. Elections for Chief and Deputy Chief Councilors for the various districts in Abaco wrapping up yesterday. The final swearing-in ceremony taking place yesterday in South Abaco. Sean Roberts was elected Chief Councilor for that district, while Vashti Aubrey is the Deputy Chief Councilor. Also from the South Abaco District, Arthur Lightborn is the chairman of the Sandy Point Town Committee. Jackie Estevez heads the Cherokee Sound Committee. Ruth Burroughs Russell chairs the Crossing Rock Committee. And Dalton Stewart is chairman of the Morris Island Committee. In the Central Abaco District, George Cornish was returned as chief counselor and Gilbert Davis will serve as his deputy. Also from that district, Matthew Taylor and Gilbert Davis were elected to head the Murphy Town Committee. Ferran Newbold and Margaret Cornish will lead the Dundas Town Committee. And the Spring City Marsh Harbor Town Committee is headed by Carl Archer and Henry Williams. Jeremy Sweeting is the chief counselor in the Hope Town District. Mike Malone is the deputy in Green Turtle Key District. Matthew Lowe is the chief counselor. And Raymond Lowe is the deputy chief counselor. Steve Pedikin is the chief counselor in North Abaco District. And Jennifer Roll is the district's deputy chief in Grand Key. Roosevelt Curry is the chief counselor. George Russell was elected deputy. Other members of the Grand Key Council are Steve Russell, Linda Saunders, and Kennedy Russell. 
Elected officials will serve for a period of three years. The Ministry of Tourism will launch this year's Gombe Summer Celebration next Thursday, July 10th. The festival will be held on Taino Beach and will feature Bahamian culture, food, music and dance. It is a signature event for the Ministry and one that residents and visitors look forward to every year. The Grand Bahama Island Tourism Board is partnering with the Ministry to pull off a successful Gombe Summer Session. Over the years, Gombe Summer was sometimes called Junkanoo in June and Junkanoo Summer Festival. But more recently, it has returned to its original name. It is a celebration of authentic Bahamian music, dance, cuisine, and craft. Gombe Summer remains a signature cultural event for the Ministry of Tourism, and in this tone of festivity, the Ministry continues to celebrate its Golden Jubilee, 50 years of promoting tourism to the world. The Bahama Island Tourism Board's partnership with the Bahamas Ministry of Tourism has enabled the festival to run an additional two weeks uh, from the traditional three weeks that the festival is held. And we're really excited about that because it gives us a great opportunity to showcase this particular event to our international visitors that will be coming to our shores. Uh, we did recently showcase the Gombe Summer Festival in our Two Fly Free program, which is a program targeting domestic travelers from Nassau and the Family Islands into Grand Bahama Island. And uh, this particular festival um, will be a great opportunity for them to enhance their visitor experience. The Gombe Summer Festival will be held every Thursday for the month of July. Stay with us, Ricardo Lightborn comes your way next with sports. everybody and welcome to Sports of Ricotta Life 1. Let's get rolling. Well, runners and walkers are gearing up to support the Grand Baba Children's Home this weekend. And it's the Fast Track Pride Run Walk. And I'm trying to get Megan and these girls in here to do something on Saturday. The Fast Track Pride Run Walk is Saturday and will benefit the Grand Bahama Children's Home. Ravana Ferguson says it's a 5 and 3K for everyone. It's a goal opportunity to run and walk for a worthy cause. This year, Run Walk will be held on Saturday, July 5th, 2014. This race will start at the Tory Gate of the Bazaar, which is a staple of our community as it's a pre-independence fun run walk. The race is open to all runners, walkers of all fitness levels, so in essence, you don't have to be in shape to participate in this event. Uh, a one mile fun run walk for the kids under 13 will also be a intricate part of this event as we are able to increase the fitness levels of, of kids uh, across uh, Grand Bahama Island. Sheila Johnson says the Grand Bahama Children's Home is excited. The health of a nation is the wealth of a nation and the race will start and finish at the Tory Gate. We have almost 30 children in the home at this present time and it's always changing. So you can't imagine how difficult it is to keep almost 30 children going 24-7. We are in desperate need of assistance from the wider community as well as corporate community. Like ZNS Fun Walk for the Salvation Army and others, Fast Track Pride event brings a smile to everyone's face, right Jean? We need all the help we can get, as Mrs. Smith has said. The cost of running the children's home has increased over the years. It used to be 200,000 and now of course it's gone up as the Everything in the economy has increased. Now it costs us about 300,000. At the moment, we have 30 children, five of whom are babies. And babies take a lot of care, not only with care from uh, our caregivers 24 seven, but also with pampers and cereal and all the baby things that they uh, need to take care of them. And don't forget that uh, Megan and Filton will walk and talking sports tomorrow. We'll be talking to Ravano and those guys about helping out the children's home. Let's go to softball for the Abaco Softball Association. Uh, the Diamond and Dolls defeated the Golden Harvest Major Payne 17-10 in ladies play. Mary Bethel was 3-for-3 three three and 6 RBIs and she got the win in law schools to Cicely Parker. The Creative Bulldogs put away the Simple Solution 8-1 and Tyler Josie Wells-Russell had a good game. Folks, a double and a single and William Weatherford threw a three-hitter and struck out a batters. The loss goes to 
Josh Rowe, the DNR Sluggers, my team, finally won a game. They defeated the hometown records 9 2. Thomas Blanks Kelly, he was right there, two runs on uh, four hits, struck eight batters. Oscar to go roll was tied with the loss. Also, coming out of Abaco, they had the Abaco Sports Association basketball games over there as well. Uh, let me tell you what happened there. It was Change Ministries uh, nipping uh, Revival Faith 14 12, and also Zion Knights of Abaco Central uh, 18 11. And the 15 division, Change Ministries over Youth and Action 17 13. The 19 and under division, Change Ministries over Zion Knights. 21 to 6, and the open division, a pretty good one there as well. It was the change ministries over the Abaco Youth Ministries, 1814. Those guys had a good time as well. Freeport Aquatic Swim Club was back in the pool on the weekend. Not to compete, but like kids want to do, have some fun. The Freeport Aquatic Swim Club had an awesome performance at the Bahamas Swim Federation Nationals, and the swimmers were treated to a fun day at the BMES pool on Saturday. Amoni Brown and Lamar Taylor said the Nationals was an experience and memorable one. I won nine medals, seven gold and two silver. I feel really good that I'm getting close to Crystal qualifying, time, qualifying times and national, so national records. Coach Bert Bell says his swimmers have worked very hard in the pool in preparation for the Nationals and it showed. Everybody swam real great. We had all kinds of personal records. Uh, I don't think anybody came home without at least one of them. Um, we had three high point trophy winners. Three guys came third in their, in their division. Uh, not talked about Delicia Fernanda came third. Uh, Ramel Ferguson came third. Teles uh, Folks came third. Uh, we had uh, Nigel swam 21 national records, seven times three. Um, Lamar had a national record, a national meet record, a 30 point change for the 53. And Telez had a national, nationals record, 26 seconds for the 53. So we, um, we've been very, very pleased with how they performed and they're training hard and hopefully we'll be going to North Carolina to show off at the end of the month. And as you know, our men's basketball team off to a pretty good start of the CBC tournament and they're playing right now. They should be 2-0 after tonight. Let's look at your sports on a Wednesday.